Well, we're on the road again. Hey, Sammy. What do you got to say about that? Hey, Sammy. Sammy says, keep that camera out of my face or I'm going to eat the camera. Welcome. You are watching Line Screw 1. Well, hello, tubers. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in this crazy YouTube universe. So, I'm on the road, I'm moving, I'm grooving. And whenever I'm moving the RV and going someplace, I always think, man, this is super expensive. <laughs> now you're probably wondering, well, why are you gonna say that? You've been doing this for years. And I go, yeah, it's true, totally true. Been doing it for years. And the price of doing everything involving RVs has now gotten more expensive, more ridiculous. And dare I say, you shouldn't buy an RV. That's right, you shouldn't. Now, for me, it's a lifestyle. I spend tens of thousands of dollars on the RV between you know insurance, maintenance, pad rental, gasoline. It never stops. So, if you uh, want to spend the money like me, go for it. Hey, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of money. Buy five RVs if you can afford it. But if you're like a regular person, you know, middle income earner, or maybe you're a low income earner, you got to be careful with your money nowadays. So I'm going to really burst your bubble on RV ownership because most people actually don't use them that much. And most people don't live in them. Of course they don't because they're not designed for that. Just because I can do that doesn't mean you should do that. That's what separates my YouTube channel from other people's channels. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not trying to sell you an idea. I'm just expressing my opinion and you can do with it as you wish. But I'm about to make a very compelling argument that you actually shouldn't own an RV. The average RV owner only uses it for a few weeks a year, maybe the odd weekend. That's it. The first year you buy an RV, you use it a lot more. Second year, you use it a lot less. Typically, most people just use it for two weeks and the odd weekend. That's it. It just sits depreciating the rest of the time. And with the increased cost of maintaining an RV, fixing an RV, God forbid if you can actually get an appointment to actually even get in to see an RV tech or even wait for the parts because of supply chain problems. So it's never cost more to actually own an RV. And that's the cost of gasoline, maintenance, and that includes storage. Yes, a lot of people don't realize until after they buy their RV, they're not legally allowed to store their RV where they live. So what do they do? They wind up spending 200 bucks or more a month to store their RV. Yeah, it's all fun and games until you become that RV owner that's not only making an RV payment, but watching his RV depreciate as he pays to store it. Don't let that be you. So find out about that before you even consider buying an RV. And let's not forget that that RV is a depreciating asset. No matter what you do, it's worth less over time. The more miles you rack on it, yes, it's worth less. And since it's just sitting around at least 48 weeks a year, is that really worth having such an expensive asset just sitting there? If you can afford it, God bless you. But let's be realistic. Most people should actually rent an RV. The reality is it is much cheaper in the long run and easier on the pocketbook to actually just rent an RV rather than own one. Until you've actually paid the gas bill, you really don't know what that trip from Maine to Los Angeles is gonna cost until you actually pay for it and crunch the numbers. It's expensive. And since road trips are so darn expensive with RVs, most people have kind of clued in that it's much easier to just get that cheap flight to Arizona, rent your RV in Arizona, and drive around Arizona. Same is true for Alaska. God forbid if you live in Georgia and you want to drive all the way up to Alaska with an RV that you actually own, that's expensive. It's so much cheaper and easier to just fly to Anchorage, pick up the RV, drive it around, take it back to the airport, and you fly home. It avoids a lot of time and, more importantly, gasoline expense to drive thousands of miles across North America. And God forbid if you own an RV, well, it's going to break down from time to time and you're going to pay for that. If you rent an RV, you're never going to pay for any of that. And 
And don't get me started on how popular RVing is now. Yes, it is. It's actually so popular that it's actually destroying the actual ability for people to enjoy themselves. Now that every Tom, Dick, and horny guy for the RV lifestyle owns an RV, guess what they're doing? It's like the Hunger Games fighting for camping spots at the state, provincial, and federal level. It's crazy. The plug-in RV sites, they're all full during peak time. Good luck getting in. And when you do get in, rates are going to be between 50 and 100 bucks a night almost everywhere. So congratulations. When you go RVing now, you're not getting away from anything. You're actually just going to another campground that has hundreds, if not thousands of people. Thank you all you influencers out there that actually helped publicize and destroy this industry and make it worse for the rest of us that just want to have a quiet time. And keep in mind that insurance rates have only skyrocketed over time. The ability to even find a mechanic that'll work on an RV is very difficult. And even if you can find one, guess what? You're going to have to wait to get an appointment just to see them and wait probably weeks just to get parts. That's because you're an RV owner and you don't care because guess what? You've got all the time in the world and all the money in the world. Of course you don't. So why even own an RV unless you really dig and understand this lifestyle and realize it is not cheap, free, and easy? No, no, it isn't. Hell, I'm telling you straight up, it costs me tens of thousands of dollars a year just to do the RV lifestyle. So don't kid yourself, folks. It's easier and cheaper to rent an RV. And when it's got problems, you turn it back to the owner. When it starts leaking, it's not your problem. And to put in perspective how free, cheap, and easy it is now, I've worked it out that just for driving around in my RV, it's $1 a mile. Of course, that's a dollar Canadian, but you get the picture. So put your comments down below. And in the meantime, folks, stay safe, keep your woes in the ground. I'll talk to you soon. Over and over. I got you, I got you